Okay, our next presenter is Dr. Sitara Fernando, who is a senior lecturer at the Department of Strategic Studies in the Faculty of Defense and Strategic Studies at Sir John Kotalawala Defense University. Um, he has very recently published a book titled United States, China, India Strategic Triangle in the Indian Ocean Region Challenges and Opportunities. Today, his presentation is titled China-Africa Political and Security Relations, an analysis of Forum on China-Africa Cooperation Documents. Dr. Fernando. Good morning, everyone. Uh, chair, ladies and gentlemen, the topic of my uh, presentation is China-Africa political and security relations and analysis of FOCAC documents, Forum on China-Africa cooperation documents. Um, in the last two decades or so, China-Africa relations have grown by leaps and bounds. The growth of China-Africa political and security relations has been a part of this very important development in contemporary international relations. The presentation will be divided into the following sections, framework of analysis, political relations, and then we'll look at security relations. Now looking at the framework of analysis, it consists of two perspectives. One, the optimist, the other, the pessimist. So this framework of analysis is primarily an interpretive framework. This framework was developed by D.H. Shin and J. Eisenman. Uh, this framework will be used to interpret Forum on China-Africa Cooperation documents. Right? Uh, this Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, or FOCAC, was established about 15 years ago, uh, when uh, China-Africa relationship started uh, you know, really taking off, right? So I will essentially use this framework of analysis to interpret uh, the documents produced by uh, FOCAC, the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, right? Now, the optimist perspective, the optimist perspective says that China is a force for development and progress in Africa. China provides Africa with valuable economic opportunities, China provides Africa with a political counterweight to the West. These are essentially the premises of the optimist perspective. Right? Then the pessimist perspective, uh, now these are the things that the pessimist perspective says. It says that China is an unwelcome challenge uh, to the position of the West in Africa. The strengthening China-Africa relationship is also a challenge to the post-Cold War world order led by the United States. And China's presence in Africa will be resisted by the Africans themselves. Now, this is what the pessimist perspective says. Right? Now, I will use this framework to analyze the documents, the, the declarations, and so on, produced by uh, the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation. Right? So, Beijing Declaration of the first ministerial meeting of FOCAC, held in October 2000, states that the establishment of a just and equitable new international political and economic order is indispensable for the democratization of international relations. This is what um, the, 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 the declaration, the Beijing declaration of the first ministerial meeting of FOCAC says. The Beijing declaration of uh, this meeting uh, also states that the developed North and the developing South should strengthen their dialogue and cooperation on the basis of equality. Right? So this problematizes the pessimist perspective which sees China as displacing the West in the North and in Africa. Right? The first summit and the third ministerial meeting of FOCAC was held in Beijing in November 2006 with the participation of 48 African countries. 
right? So you can see the nature of the growing China-Africa relationship by the number of countries participating uh, in uh, the number of African countries participating in FOCAP. 48 African countries participated in the 2006 meeting. Throughout the declaration of the 2006 FOCAC summit, China contributes uh, to, ma uh, to, ma uh, to make common cause with Africa as developing countries. However, it also notes the increasing interdependence of the world and states that different civilizations and modes of development should draw on each other's experience, promote each other, and coexist in harmony. So, so you can see how, you know, there is a, there is a, in a sense, there is a combination of the optimist and pessimist perspectives here, right? So uh, the declaration of the 2006 FOCAC summit calls for the enhancement of North-South dialogue. This indicates that FOCAC is not envisioned as a form of cooperation that aims to displace the developed northern or the western countries from Africa. The Beijing Action Plan 2007-2009 issued at the end of this summit announced the decision of China and African countries to regularly hold a political consultation. So uh, this political consultation would involve their foreign ministers meeting on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly annual meeting following every FOCAC ministerial meeting, right? The emergence of the political consultation among foreign ministers of China and Africa on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly annual meeting as a regular event can strengthen their collective bargaining position at the UN, right? While this outcome appears to lend some credibility to the fear implied by the pessimist view that China's contemporary relations with Africa are aimed at challenging the US-led world order, it, it need not be seen in those, those terms, right? Um, when considered in the light of references made in earlier statements to global interdependence and North-South dialogue, this move can be interpreted as an effort to improve the bargaining strength of the developing world within that world order. Right, the post-Cold War world order led by the United States. Then we move on to security relations. Turning to the security relationship, one of its most important features is FOCAC's repeated call for greater African representation in uh, the UN Security Council in almost all of its declarations. Right? The two most important substantive Chinese involvements in the African security are peacekeeping operations of the UN and AU and the anti-piracy effort of Somalia. There's a possibility of China and the US cooperating on UN peacekeeping operations in Africa. The US and China have also cooperated in anti-piracy operations of Somalia. So this again problematizes the pessimist view, which ignores the possibility of China-US cooperation in, the West, in, in Africa. So to conclude, uh, this is a table that I made uh, of my analysis. So from the optimist perspective, with regard to competition, China provides Africa with a political counterweight to the West. Uh, from uh, the pessimist perspective, with regard to competition, China's strength strengthening ties with Africa are an unwelcome challenge to the West. From the optimist perspective, with regard to cooperation, no cooperation between China and the West in Africa. Pessimist perspective with regard to cooperation, no cooperation between China and Africa, uh, China and the West in Africa, right? So essentially, what I'm trying to say is it, there, there is, in both the perspectives, there is an emphasis on competition, competition between uh, China and the US in Africa. Both of, both these perspectives do not give enough attention to the possibilities of cooperation between China and the West in Africa, right? So, so the optimist-pessimist dual framework, while it provides a useful tool for analyzing contemporary China-Africa relations, for example, one can discern different facets of the relationship through this framework, different angles or different interpretations of the relationship. Um, however, there is a fundamental weakness common to both the optimist and pessimist perspectives. Both perspectives see the China-Africa relationship essentially in zero-sum mm. zero terms. Now, what do I mean by zero-sum terms? That is, the gain of one party automatically results in a loss for another party. Right? That is what I mean by zero-sum terms. So, from the optimist perspective, Africa's gain leads to a loss for the West. 
From the pessimist perspective, China's gain leads to a loss for the West. Right? So, so that is why I think that scholarship on the China-Africa relationship must go beyond the optimist-pessimist dual framework. It must seek to identify opportunities for the China and the West to cooperate in Africa. Such opportunities, in my view, exist in peacekeeping and anti-piracy operations. So I would like to conclude with that.